Did one Hollywood movie from the early 1990s predict all of this Santos drama decades earlier? Thomas Jefferson Johnson is no ordinary con man. Take the damn money. Take the watch, please. You know this goes against my every principle. There is only one place for people like him. I want to tell y'all about a town where the streets are paved with gold. You mean Las Vegas? No, not Las Vegas. He's talking about Washington, D.C. I am running for Congress. Now, Thomas Johnson con man <laughs> is Thomas Johnson congressman. Read my lips! Joining me now, screenwriter of that film, the distinguished gentleman, Marty Kaplan, I need to rewatch it. I'm going to rewatch that film um, tonight. I remember watching it many years ago, but that makes me want to rewatch it, um, having seen what has happened over the last um, week or, or year, really, um, with that. You wrote a really interesting piece for um, Political Magazine. I want to read a quote from it for, for folks. Um, when I wrote the screenplay, I never imagined anyone could actually pull off a scam like that. But 30 years, almost to the day after the movie opened, I saw the headline of a bombshell story in The New York Times who is rep-elect George Santos? His resume may be largely fiction. It was a spit, take your smoothie moment for me. The distinguished gentleman may not exactly have been art, but life was all in on imitating it. What do you make of these parallels between the film that you wrote and what is happening now in Congress? Well, if you knew what I'm working on now, you'd know what's going to happen in 30 years, clearly. <laughs> and what is it? Tell us so we can <laughs> bet money on it. <laughs> I am astonished, delighted, appalled, all the things that uh, any SNL viewer might be by what's going on. Uh, I was furious at campaign uh, expenditures and campaign money and the loopholes in the this was in the late 80s and early 90s and the fact that they were all legal is what got me that you could go to congress and do everything that a small time a two-bit con man was doing but in washington all that money was legal there was a book at that point called legal graft which kind of uh, uh, gives gives the idea. And if George Santos had had Eddie Murphy showing him the ropes, yeah. he might well still be in office. It's, it's interesting that you say that because I want to read another piece, uh, another portion of this piece um, in which you mentioned essentially Santos could have pulled this off. Um, and you say this, if only he had had Eddie Murphy to show him the ropes, as you just said, um, George Santos's grift could have been perfectly legal. Instead of using a campaign debit card to pay for Botox, OnlyFans and Ferragamo, a Santos leadership pack, could have whitewashed his self-care expenditures by bending but not breaking the rules. Instead of charging his campaign for getaways to Harrow's and Caesars, Atlantic City, Santos could have cultivated a circle of billionaires who enjoyed his company, flew him to glam locales, and kept their largesse on the down low. So he just really didn't have the knowledge and the wherewithal to pull off a scam like this. Yeah, he should have he should have had a really expensive campaign finance lawyer on his staff because uh. all he needed was some guidance and things like dark money and super PACs and leadership PACs and state PACs. People forget that states also have PACs. All that stuff is legal. And George Santos might not even have been caught had he not had the disease of wanting to be famous. Um, your movie ended a little bit differently than how Santos's career um, has ended as a member of Congress in that Eddie Murphy essentially develops a conscience when he's um, confronted by a constituent who has cancer yeah. and he admits to his, his wrongdoings and his charlatan ways. And you wrote in this piece before, by the way, um, the expulsion vote that you were hopeful that Santos would do the same. He did not. Um, surprise, surprise. Uh, but do you think any lessons have been learned here? Well, the the fact that uh, he developed a conscience uh, provoked from him. His girlfriend, a public interest lawyer, said, don't tell me you're developing a conscience. And he said, no, it would be an effing nuisance in Congress. Um, when Santos was expelled, uh, members of Congress delighted in exposing his background as a fraudster, which is exactly what happened in the climactic scene in The Distinguished Gentleman. He is revealed to be a crook. And what I was hoping he would do is say, yeah, that's true, 
But here, everything that I would have been caught for at home is legit. That's the piece that didn't happen. I don't think we've learned any lessons about campaign finance reform. We've probably uh, learned that there are colorful people, not all of whom are former presidents. Marty Kaplan, real quick, what are you working on now? <laughs> I'm doing a piece about an anchor at a cable network who become who wins the lottery. Really? If you if you believe me, I have a George Santos I'd like to sell you. <laughs> Marty Kaplan, thank you. Appreciate it. We'll be looking out.